Why do system analysis and design when you can just start coding? So why bother with the formalities? In case you're wondering this, let, then let me clear one thing. Something that makes your work easier and efficient is not a formality. Let me ask you one thing. How can you code something when you don't know what exact functionality you're supposed to code and how the functionality is going to be distributed in a system? After all, a system has to do some work and it has to do it in some proper way. And system analysis and design always tells you what the system is supposed to do and how it does. When you haven't even sorted out these questions, how are you going to implement it? And not thinking about the what and the how and just trying to code it is a rough path of hidden trial. And hidden trial always consumes a lot of time. And if you are some student working on some project or anybody working on a project, time is something really precious to you. You don't, don't want to waste it. So I'll just say don't make stuff hectic when simplifying it is much easier. And system analysis and design doesn't take that much of time as much as it can save it for you. Now just to clarify what system analysis and design does for you, how it helps you implement your system, I'll give you an analogy, an example. And that example uh, tries to say that system analysis and design is similar to making a recipe for a meal. How is that? Let's just say we're making a recipe, a new, brand new recipe for some meal. That recipe is something unique. So whenever we want to make a recipe, of course, first we need to know what we are going to make. Suppose we're making a meal for dinner. Then we're supposed to know what is for dinner. You have to decide on what the what. And the next question comes in mind, okay, what is this thing going to be made above? I mean, what are the constituent ingredients? For example, if I'm making a pasta, I'm supposed to have these ingredients, right? So I need to decide what exactly do I need in order to develop this meal. For example, if it's spicy, the texture it should have, and all the flavors I want, all the ingredients are going to depend on, my, on those requirements, those flavor requirements if we're talking about food. Another thing that we need to know is what are the tools or utensils I'm supposed to use in order to make this cook this food because as you know you, your ingredients are of no use if you don't have a way to interact with them to cut them up to cook them. So the next thing we need to know is that what are the utensils to use. You can say the utensil is a way for you to interact with your ingredients to combine them to mix them and to create your final dish. One thing left out is how do you cook it? The procedure and that totally depends on what you're making for dinner. Your flavors, what you what you want the flavor to be, what the texture, what is the texture you want and what are the ingredients. It totally depends on these two things that you decide that what will be the utensil you're going to use and how you're going to cook all of this together. These two questions, the answers to these two questions will depend to whatever you have decided above. Once you have decided on all of them and jotted them down on some paper, for example, then that is exactly what we call a recipe. A recipe gives you the ingredients, the amount of ingredients, and the steps you use to cook that meal, correct? Now, how is it all similar to system analysis and design? Let's just say that our dinner or our meal was actually the system. So, our goal is to make a system. And we know that a system can be thought of as being a made up of group of functions or that is a combination of components. So we can say that our ingredients are actually components and for a face recognition system for example they could be the face detector, faces database, image acquisition component, uh, some component that recognizes the faces and some component that actually manages the database. Okay so when you decide on the components for a system you're still lacking one thing the thing that actually allows you to interact with whatever system you're making. That is the tools you need to interact with the system. For example, you want to give an input image to your system or want to see some output image or just want to give some other input, for example, uh, a name, a name of a face. How are you going to interact with your system? So just as we needed some utensils to work on our ingredients, we need some tools, user interface tools, to interact with our components, whatever code we're making. So let's just call our utensils the user interface controls. For example, the picture box, the button, text boxes, group boxes, and labels. 
Now, if we look at it this way, then what have we decided so far? We decided what we want. We decided what it's made of, what work it should do, and how it did that, how it does it, and which also depends on the tools we're going to use. Of course, the ingredients also depend on the tools, and tools depend on the ingredients you're using. So, the, your tools that you select give you a way to interact with your system and you also decide the layout of the tools where which thing is supposed to go. Once you have decided all of this, that is exactly what we call system analysis and design, where design has two things, logical design, that is the working of the system, and user interface design, the tools and their layouts as you see in this form. So yep, system analysis and design is similar to a recipe in that it is also a, an idea just as a recipe is. When you implement both of them, you get your final product. For a recipe, you get your meal, and for system analysis and design, you definitely get the system that you're analyzing and designing. And I hope this concept of system analysis and design is a bit clearer, especially for those who are not from software engineering background, and I think, I hope you know why do system analysis in the first place? Why is it, uh, why do we need to do it? because as you'll see it will make your uh, implementation a bit easier not a bit but pretty much easier so let's go along and see what we have to do next